Good morning. Good afternoon. No, it's not afternoon, yeah. Good morning. It's almost afternoon. I'm glad to see so much young people here today. Amen. And I pray that um, the little talk that I have with you will be a blessing. It's a privilege each and every day that I am grateful that we can study God's Word and speaking to Him, speaking for Him is not easy, but God is good. Amen. Today is a blessed day because God has allowed each and every one of us to come and worship Him. And today as I sit there, you know, a thought come to me that I'm I can quiz you a little. How many know what any how many people know the Bible of God? And how many people know the Bible of God? It's good. How many of us know our Bible? Okay. Simple questions. Yeah. This is the first book of the Bible. Genesis. Okay. Yes. So you know the Bible. Right? <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I just thought about this. Oh, I can. Um, what's the last book of the Bible? Revelation. Okay. Amen. Yes. And this is the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi. Nice. Yes, Malachi. Yeah. So we, we get into it. Thank God. Yes, we are past the test. <laughs> yeah, so today it, it, it's a blessed day, and you know, as we come together, it's a real two and three gathering in His name, is in the midst of us, and do good. And as we go about our lives each and every day, we will be tested. And if we are not tested, we will know where our strength is. And so, in order to walk this life, we have to prepare as we, as God's children. We have a duty to God and we have a duty to ourselves. Mm. Today, as we look around in our world, there's so much is happening. Mm. All kinds of things is happening. Yes. The devil is stepping up his game. Mm. The devil is really stepping up his game. And we have to be sober and be vigilant for the judge. Is that the gate? And today, my scripture or my lesson today is said, Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You that believe in God also believe in me. Do we really and truly believe in God? We have to ask ourselves that question. And that question should be in our mind moment by moment. You know, when I wrote this little gem here, have you ever imagined, would you like to meet a famous person? If you meet a famous person, he or she, and they ask you, Take all, or leave all your stuff, and come and follow them. What will you do? You meet a famous person, and they said, leave all your stuff, and follow them. What mm -hmm. will you do? We understand that even Hezekiah God asked him the same questions, not really. <laughs> yes. So it's just a decision that we have to make mm. daily. And today, the same question is asking, let not your heart be troubled. Mm. You that believe in God also believe in me. What is Jesus saying here?
is asking us the same question. And I want each and every one of us to search our minds and answer that question. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful and we are grateful for this moment. Lord, we thank you for this little gathering here, Lord. Father, for you said, we are two and three gathering in your name. You are in the midst to bless and do good. And Lord, we are more than three. And therefore, we know we can claim that blessing. Father, bless us here and now. And whatsoever has been said must come directly from your word. And Father, I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner saved by your grace. And Lord, as we open your word, then let us, by your grace, trust you. Here we cannot trace you. So, in this love and mercy, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, open your Bibles and let us turn to Matthew 14. Matthew 14. You find it? What Matthew. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. John 14. Oh. You know Matthew in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> no Matthew. John 14. Amen. Amen? Yes. Yes. Jesus, as we look here, Jesus make a statement. He's telling, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. You that believe in God also believe in me. Said in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Mm -hmm. That where I am, he may be also. And wherever I go, you know, and the way you know. We all are faced with trouble. And Jesus is saying, don't worry, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is saying, as you believe in God, He we also believe in him. If we don't believe in him, that means we don't believe in God. In our world, we will have trouble and tribulation. That doesn't change the fact that God is not there. God is still there. And seeing that we have trouble, what can we do about the situation? Are we doing anything? Or are we doing nothing? What is causing the heart to trouble? And these are questions we should have in our mind. We find ourselves in this situation what are we doing about the situation? And there are many stories about persons who find themselves in this situation and we're going to look and see what they did in this situation. And this will tell us that in this situation there were one thing on their mind, they were God. Let us turn to Genesis 39 and let us read 1 and 2. Genesis 39, 1 and 2. I think we know the story. Find it. Let me 
find it, say amen. 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 <clears throat> Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was, he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Yes, stop there. What situation did Joseph find himself in? We'll call that slavery. Hmm. None of us have ever been into slavery. We don't know what it's like. Until. We only hear stories about what a slave went through. We didn't know how far Joseph had to walk when he was sold. Hmm. But what he did in that situation, what did he have in mind? God mm -hmm. was on his mind. Yes. And so when we are going through situation, nothing else should matter. God should be on our, on our mind. Mm -hmm. And it says here, and the Lord was mm -hmm. with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he, and he was in the house of his master. It wasn't his own house. No. He was in a situation. And despite of his situation, he continued to trust God. Are we trusting God at that point? Yes. Joseph find himself in many other situations. And we also, as we are Christian, as we move our lives, we will find ourselves in situation. That was only one situation that he find himself in. Verse 7 tells us, let us read verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. She said, Lie with me. Yes, we see what comes in here. When you become prosperous, what is happening? What will happen? Temptation. Temptation. Mm. Young people, temptation. Mm. We have to be weird. The devil will never <coughs> leave you. No. Especially when you plan to walk with the Lord. And here, Joseph was in slavery. And he was prosperous. And some things are happening. If he wasn't prosperous, the master wife wouldn't have seen him. Hmm. Here, the highest form of temptation. The devil will always try to distract you, mm. especially when you promise, when you plan to walk with the Lord. Verse 8, but he refuse. We have to refuse. Mm. We have to, when we are faced with temptation, mm. we have to make a decision. Mm. Despite the consequences that it will bring. Sometimes you might not know the consequences, but sin only can bring death. Sin might only appear to be good or nice or pleasing, but the end thereof is destruction. Mm. But when we stand for God, God will deliver us. Despise where He might lead you in that situation that you make a positive choice, God will stand for you. It says here, and if you and he refused 
and said his master and, and said unto his master wife, Behold, my master watereth not what it sorry what not that it would be the house and he committed all that he had into his hand. What she's what he's saying here, all that I that the master he don't know what is happening in his house. I am the one. And that's why the devil is trying to remove that relationship. The devil will not leave you. Verse 10, And it come to pass, as she speak to Joseph day by day, that he hearken not unto her, the lie with her. Today, we may shun, or we think we may, the devil will, one temptation will come, and okay, we overcome that one. But the devil will not let you rest. Mm -hmm. He will trouble you, how long? Mm -hmm. Day by day. As long as you live. Yes, he will trouble you day by day in different situations. But we have to have Jesus and we have to stand despise what is happening. Amen. And Jesus <coughs> made that decision. Not knowing or knowing because when you distrust God, or when you break God's principle, when you break God's commandment, it will only bring sin and death. Verse 12 says, as we go on, and I just read the first part, and she caught him by his garment, saying, She become the devil become so desperate. <laughs> That he will force you. Mm. But what you have to do? Is that when you flee, resist the devil, yes. and he will flee. He's resisting here, and the devil is coming strong. Because Joseph refused to heal to the devil. You overcome one challenge, and he could have only do that because God was with him. Amen. And so we need to keep God in our thoughts. And because of this, he ended up where? In prison. When we try to do the right thing, that doesn't mean we're going to not have trouble. Because he did the right thing, he was what? <laughs> Prosecuted mm -hmm. for doing the right thing. We as Christians will be prosecuted for doing the right thing. But it tells us here God was still with him. This does not mean we don't believe in God. Sorry. This does not mean when we believe in God, we will not have trouble. But God is faithful. Verse 21 tells us, And Joseph master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king prisoners were bound. So he went in what? Prison for doing the, what? the right thing. We will, be, we will be put in prison for doing the right thing. But what? What what? Joseph had a character. He had something that he had lived after. And if he go back, he said, when Joseph speak, he tells the master's wife, 
How can I do this mm. wickedness and sin against God? Amen. When we are faced with situation, we must ask ourselves the question, will God be pleased with what I'm doing? Joseph was troubled and he believed in God. Look at 4 to 1, 8. Somebody else was troubled. Can you read? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Genesis 41, 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt, and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them in his dream, but there was none that could interpret them into Pharaoh. So we see Pharaoh now is in trouble. Pharaoh's heart is in trouble. So not only we as poor people, or people who are of low <coughs> state are trouble. The king here tr was trouble. Mm. And when you are troubled, you need answers. And you call upon those who we think had answers, but he did not find answer in them. And if he continues the story, we know that um, Joseph was the one who found answer. And even the prison, it tells us the Lord was with him. I don't want to elaborate on that. Let us go to Daniel 2, 3. <coughs> See here, a next king heart is troubled. Can you read Daniel 2, 3? And the king said to them, I have a dream. And my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Yes, so we see King Nebuchadnezzar, he also was what? Trouble. Mm. So trouble is all around us every day. Mm. We cannot escape from trouble. But what we have to do, we have to do what God asks us to do. Say it here. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat or with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requests of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Verse 9 And God had brought Daniel in favor and with tender love with the prince of the eunuch. Daniel and his three friends, they also were in a situation. They were slaves in a different country. But they had something that they know that God will deliver them. God, they trust. Sometimes you say, okay, I'm not home now, so I can do <laughs> anything. Mm -hmm. Nobody's watching. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to know. I can do anything. God is watching over us. And we have to purpose in our heart. We have to plan. And we have to start planning now. If I'm going out there, I might fall into some kind of temptation which might lead to sin. Before you left home, purpose in your heart, I am not doing anything that will cause grief or pain or that Jesus will do. We have to plan ahead. And because sometimes we are not planning ahead, we are not purposing when situations arise, what happens? We, the devil catches off guard and we fell into trouble. And then we then when he left us, we can say if we didn't know. 
we know God is asking us to plan in advance. And how can we plan to all for all this eventuality? We have to spend time in this world. Because this will prepare us when we are faced with these situations which we don't know each and every day we face with, that when they arise, we can call upon the word of God and it will come to mind. As Joseph he said, if I do this, it's what? It's not right. It's wickedness. And so we have to do put the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. What is accepted by God or not. We have to know that for sure. And we have to purpose in our heart that we won't do anything that is wrong. Here we see Daniel purpose in their heart. Though they were what? Trouble. And they did something about that situation when they had a struggle. John 44, sorry, John 12, 55. John 12, 55. I get back to my scripture. John 12, 55. Sometimes you assume you want to talk about but just to let you know when our heart is troubled we can do something about it and what we do about it is to keep God in our thoughts John 12 44 to 4 John 12 44 Jesus Christ and said, He that believe on me, believe. He that believe on me, believe on me, but on him that sent me. So in our action is telling us something. That whatsoever when we do what is right, it is showing us that we believe in God. Mm. As Jesus said, let not our heart be troubled, he that believe in God also believe in him mm -hmm. and so as we read our bibles and we come to understand that our belief doesn't base on any favor but it's based upon the word of god those who love jesus he said those who love him as we look in john 14 15 it says john 14 15 says if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Don't want us to say that we love him, but we want us to do something about the situation by showing it in our action. And this year, Jesus is making it plain. If you love me, keep my commandment. And if you're not keeping this commandment, we are saying something. What you're saying, I don't love him. Mm. Our actions speak louder than our voice. Mm. And today, I want us to let others see us. The devil also will see us. But when the devil comes in like a flood, God will do something. He will lift up the standard. He will lift up the standard and save us because we trust in Him. Let us trust in the Lord. And today as we look around in our world, the devil is lowering the standard. People in the church are trying to lower the standard to bring in people. No, God is saved. He is lifting up the standard. And more the devil become rampant, we need to lift up the standard of God. God is looking upon us to lift up His standard. 
Some of us are the only people or the only people that they can see Christ in. And so by our action, we can make a change in people's lives. Okay. By what we do. By Joseph, life and his action and his standard, we see he saved Israel, I'm um, sorry, Egypt, seven years of famine because of his life. He was able to demonstrate and God gave him the wisdom that he could have saved that nation. One person God used to save that nation. <coughs> Let us be that person who God is using to meet other person so we can save them and probably we don't know how much. But if it's one person we are able to save by our life, let us do it. How much you know about your Jesus? It's a question. How much you know about your Jesus? What relationship do we have with our Jesus? That's a personal question. Do we know our own heart? We have to ask ourselves that same question. Do we know our own heart? Are we purposing our heart that I am going to do what is right despise I might be put into prison I might be threatened with death are we ready to stand for our Lord despise what is happening Joseph Heart, though it was troubled, but he did something about it. And what he did, as Jesus said, he that believed in God also believed in me. So Jesus, Joseph was a believer of God. Daniel was a believer of God. And as we come here each and every day, there is only one purpose we come in here. That we can unite with one another and share the relationship that we have with our God. That we can talk and that we can strengthen one another so that we can have a closer walk with our God. Despite the situation we are in, that means we are doing something about our trouble. Huh? We worry about all kinds of stuff. But the only worry we should be having, not even any worry, because Jesus already take that worries. Because if you love him, because he said, I go away, which is a promise. What he says, for she, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And he's not only gone to prepare that place, said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that you may be also. But there is a condition. That condition is that we have to purpose in our heart to do whatsoever he says. He says, if you love me, keep my command. Because he promised that he's coming back. And each and every time we come here, we want to know that Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back to do what? Not to look upon our faith, but he said, I'm coming back to receive you unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. How we know where Jesus is coming? Acts 2, it tells us, 
as he was ascending to heaven, Acts 2 or Acts 1, the angel says, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? He said, This same Jesus that is taken up from you will come again. Mm -hmm. And so we know that Jesus is going to come again. And as we come each and every day, and as we go through our lives, we must be looking forward for when he come again and receive us unto himself. Because we know, it tells us in Revelation, that this world will not last forever. Mm. And as we look around in our world today, and you hear some experiment on what they are doing, mm -hmm. it makes your heart turn and just want God to come quickly. Precious share was disturbing that this week on the news they're talking about men breastfeeding babies. <laughs> Our world is going mad. Saying that they're gonna develop some or they have developed some hormones and the man is gonna take it. And when their partners need help, the men gonna breastfeed the babies. Brethren, when you hear these things, mm. Jesus Christ mm. is coming soon. Amen. Because he said the imagination of men will be evil continually and we see they are pushing the bounds they are pushing it as far as possible and he said when the sin has meet the heaven mm -hmm. we know in the time of Noah what God says mm -hmm. the sins has reached the heaven mm -hmm. and when the sin has reached the heaven God is going to come mm -hmm. brethren let us be prepared when we see all these things are happening, what we need to do? We need to draw closer mm. to God. We need to read His Word. We need to trust Him at His Word. And apply it to our lives so that we will not be deceived. This morning, may God help us maybe when we are troubled trust God mm. and verse 4 he said whether I go you know and the way you know mm. Jesus said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father mm. but by Him. And if we don't have Jesus in our life, when He come again, we are not going anywhere. We know that this world is destined to burn and everything in it will go up. And if when Jesus come and we are not ready and he took those who are ready, those who remain will be born down. We don't want to be born down. Whether we are dead, because it says that whether We are there. We still have to give an account of said mm -hmm. Daniel said, and I see thrones were set up and books were open and the judgment was set. In Ecclesiastes 12, 14, it reminds us that every thing, let us turn there. Close up one more thing. Everything that we do, let's see. 
get us to think about it. Ecclesiastes 14. He said, For God shall bring every work into judgment. Mm -hmm. with, ever, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm -hmm. So there is no escape in that. Mm -hmm. No escape. God will bring it. Our only open, our only escape is to give all to Jesus. Second mm -hmm. Timothy, uh, first Timothy one seventeen, and this should be our prayer. Second Timothy, uh, first Timothy one. 17 and it says first Timothy 17 it says now unto the eternal God immortal, invisible the only wise God be honor, glory forever and this is what we should be doing, giving the eternal, the only wise God, glory. And if that is our prayer, let us stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving this word to you. We pray, O oh God, that when we are troubled, for you said, let not our heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. As we believe in you, we believe in your Son. And he promised that he's gone to prepare a place for us. And he's coming to receive us unto ourselves. But unto his self. And help us, O oh God, that we do the things that please the same. That when he come back, he will meet us faithful, trusting the spies of our hard troubles that we will be facing, that we will purpose in our heart, as Daniel and as Joseph, to do that which is right and turn away from everything that is evil. Be with us. This is our humble prayer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.